My brother invited us over, ensuring that we wouldn't need to worry about rent or utilities. I work in the finance sector, and my husband, whom we all call Charlie, is a car mechanic. We live in my childhood home. By childhood home, I don't mean that my parents live there. Actually, my family home is a long-standing family business where my father used to be the CEO. I have a brother, and he was originally planned to take over my father's company, so he majored in economics in college. On top of that, my talented brother studied abroad at Oxford University, learned more about business management, returned to the United States, and worked with my father for several years. Eventually, my parents wanted to enjoy their retirement and moved to a place like Aspen, Colorado, seeming to enjoy the relaxed life surrounded by nature. Since my brother was given the company, in return, my parents passed down the family home to me, their daughter, and I decided to live there with my husband. The house is conveniently located with excellent access to public transportation, less than a five-minute walk from the train station. Commercial facilities, hospitals, and schools are also within walking distance. Considering the future, when our children leave the nest, we will be able to live comfortably. So, in that sense, I'm grateful that my parents gave me this house. We were planning on expanding our family and living happily, but we never thought that our life would come to a sudden end because of such an incident. After moving into this house, my mother-in-law started to visit frequently. Knowing that my parents run a business, my mother-in-law often asks about money. Hey Maya, how many assets do your parents have? When your parents pass away, how much will you inherit? She often asks. She often talks about these things, and I couldn't help but think that she was rather distasteful. I didn't want to be too blunt, so I replied, I wonder how much. I'd never really thought about it, so I don't know. I've already received the house, so I might not get any money. Although I laughed and responded lightly, she said, that can't be true, can it? Your parents are over 60, you never know what might happen. They must have discussed their assets with you. She seemed to be so interested in the asset discussion that, at that moment, I was convinced that she was counting on my parents' wealth. I already know how much I will receive, but I decided to keep silent, thinking it would be better not to tell my mother-in-law or my husband, who is close to her. However, an unthinkable incident occurred after this. Suddenly, without any notice, my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law's family moved into our house around 8 a.m. on a holiday. The doorbell rang unexpectedly, and when I opened the door, there were movers. Why are the movers here? As I was surprised and confused, my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law's family arrived and said, we're going to be living here from today, so please take care of us. When I saw their grinning faces, I got chills down my spine. Just then, my husband woke up, and when I asked him to explain the situation, he said nonchalantly, what's the problem? If mom and the others move into this house, it's so spacious, so you should be able to spare some room. He spoke as if it was only natural to give them some space. I was surprised enough that we were living together, but then my sister-in-law said something even more outrageous. We were invited by a brother, Maya. Since he called us, we're not going to pay any rent or utilities, so we're counting on you, Maya. About my brother-in-law, he intruded into various rooms without permission and said, this room has good sunlight, so give it to us. Charlie, move all the stuff in here out to the hallway. I felt dizzy at this exchange. This is my house, but they are opening rooms here and there, trying to use them as their own. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law's family have been lacking common sense for a while, especially my sister-in-law, who had rummaged through my bag without permission before. If things continue like this, they'll take over my room, and now is enough. This is my house. Why are you acting like you own this place? I've had it. I want everyone to get out. I normally don't lose my cool or raise my voice in anger, but having these people move into the house my parents gave me without permission and treating it like it was theirs was something I could not stand. That's why I lost control of my emotions and shouted at all three of them. But then, something unexpected happened. 
How dare you talk to us like that? You're the one who should get out. The moment those words were spoken, I felt a severe pain in my cheek. Wait, did I get slapped? I realized what had happened a few seconds after being hit. I was stunned. I couldn't believe what had happened, and all that was left was a throbbing pain in my cheek. At that moment, I felt something snapping inside me. It goes without saying, I can't live with people who would do something like this. But this house is mine. I don't want them living here like parasites. I packed up my things to leave the house, intending to inform my family about this. I had to find a place far away from home, so I rented a monthly apartment for the time being. From there, I would have to commute to work. The moment I told my parents about it over the phone, I could tell they were furious, even through the phone, especially my dad. He is very doting and has always adored me and my brother. He was a strict CEO, but as a father, he was always kind and quick to help when we were in trouble. I didn't want to involve my parents, who were just about to retire, in something like this, but I was forced to because my inherited house was being taken away from me. While I was living in the monthly apartment, I was sure though, my husband and his family were freely using my house. So, I decided to do something that my brother and father suggested. A few days later, I checked my phone during my break and found dozens of missed calls and messages from my husband. Well, I knew why he was calling. I had called the water company and the electric company to cut off the utilities. Our house is all electric, so nothing works without electricity and we haven't installed solar panels yet. So, it must be pretty tough without electricity and water. The calls from my husband were probably to do something about it. Just as I was about to ignore it, my husband called again, timing it perfectly with my break. Hey, what's going on? There's no electricity, and the water isn't working. You stopped the electricity and water, didn't you? I could clearly imagine the panic state my husband was in from his voice over the phone. The house is mine, so now that I'm gone, there's no way I can leave the electricity and water on, right? That's why I had to cut off. If I left the utilities on, I would have to pay the bills, even though I'm not living there. I can't accept that. So, naturally, I had a cut off. At this, my husband was furious and demanded that I renew the contract immediately. Just because he says to renew it doesn't mean I'm going to say okay. I understand. If they want to renew it, they should do it with their own money. But whenever it comes to this, they always say things like, it's your house, so you should pay. So their words and actions don't match. Anyway, I have no intention of renewing the contract or paying. If you don't like it, then get out of the house right away. After saying only that, I hung up the phone because my break was ending. Afterwards, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my brother-in-law all called me. All of them were saying the same thing, they wanted me to get the electricity and water hooked up. Their room was hot and uncomfortable, they said. It was inconvenient without water. But all of this was their problem, not mine. After listening to everything they said, I told them to handle it themselves and hung up the phone. I figured they were just greedy for money and thought they would give out and leave soon. However, even after a week passed, there was no sign of them leaving, so I decided to push them further. I consulted with my father's company's lawyer about the situation and asked him to send a notice to my husband. The content of the notice was about trespassing. They had barged into the house I owned without any consultation, drove me out of it, and were using it as their own. I explained to the four of them, who used this malicious tactic, that I was considering taking legal action. Hey, hey, what's going on? Why did I get such a document from a lawyer? Was it necessary to go this far? My husband, who seemed panicked and not expecting me to go this far, came to me for a settlement. Knowing how concerned they are about their public image, the prospect of being sued would be extremely damaging to them mentally. They definitely want to avoid dealing with a lawyer at all costs, but they don't want to give up their current lifestyle, so they're probably scheming to persuade me to let them continue their current lifestyle. 
I can see through what my husband is thinking like it's in the palm of my hand. That said, there's no way I can listen to what they have to say. So I didn't comply with my husband. At this, my husband finally exploded in anger, forgetting that he was at work, and yelled at me loudly, cut it out. Are you getting carried away? Just because we're a little underhanded doesn't mean you can act so high and mighty. Go back to how things were right now and drop the lawyer. Even though he yelled in anger, it didn't affect me at all. On the contrary, I was annoyed by his phone call, thinking, who do you think you are, taking over someone else's house? No matter what you say or shout at me, my feelings won't change. If you continue to squat there, I will take legal action. You better think hard before you act. Over the phone, my husband was still shrieking, but I ignored him and hung up the phone. This is a waste of time, and I've already talked to my lawyer about divorce. When I got home, I had received calls from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, but I knew they were just going to talk about settling the matter. I didn't want to waste any more time, so I blocked their numbers to prevent further calls. After that, my prideful husband's family couldn't bear the idea of being sued, so they packed their bags and vacated the house. Then the lawyer intervened, and the divorce negotiations proceeded smoothly. I also had a house cleaning service come in, and finally, I was able to return to my sparkling clean house. Living apart from my husband's family and then in a monthly rental was comfortable, but of course, living in my own home is the best. The house is pretty worn down in some places, so I need to consider renovating soon. I consulted with my father, and he introduced me to a good contractor, so I started consulting about the renovation. Living alone is really comfortable. I'm not bound by anyone. I can lie around on the sofa without getting scolded. I can eat whatever I want without anyone saying anything. And while I was enjoying my current life, I received the contact from my ex-husband for the first time in three months. At first, I didn't answer the phone because I didn't recognize the number, but when the call kept coming from the same number, I thought it might be from a contractor, so I reluctantly answered the phone. However, as soon as I recognized the voice, my mood was completely ruined. It was from my ex-husband, whom I had divorced three months ago. I had already divorced him with the intervention of a lawyer, we even made a promise never to approach each other again. So, what on earth does he want now? And changing his phone number just to call me, is strange. No matter how you look at it, we promised through our lawyer not to see or contact each other again. There's nothing left for us to talk about, so please don't contact me anymore, I said. Right as I was about to hang up the phone, he said, hold on a minute, please. I just need you to listen, just for a little while. I'm begging you. With that, he started yapping without any permission from me. Apparently, my ex-husband's company is facing a serious financial crisis, and it's decided that his salary will be reduced. My mother-in-law's health is not good, and she is unable to work. My sister-in-law and her husband can't contribute to the living expenses since he isn't working a steady job. My sister-in-law is working multiple part-time jobs, but most of her paycheck is being used to pay off the debt that my brother-in-law made. The situation was desperate, as my ex-husband was trying hard to make ends meet, but with his salary getting cut, it will become increasingly difficult to survive. Well, hearing all that, I couldn't think of anything but, okay, is that so? Because they intruded into my house without my permission, did whatever they pleased, and then tried to kick me out, it's simply unbelievable. I feel nothing for the people who did such a thing, and I have no sympathy for them. Even if you tell me these things, it doesn't solve anything. It's your family, you should deal with it yourself. There's nothing I can do about it, I added. At my words, my ex-husband started to panic even more. Don't say things like that. We're in serious trouble. We won't even be able to pay the rent for the apartment and we'll be struggling for food tomorrow. Hey, we used to be a family, right? Please help us he pleaded in a voice close to crying. But I was not convinced. When I was in trouble, he did nothing to help, and he looked down on me along with my mother-in-law. Just like my mother-in-law, 
my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law have also always looked down on me. They insulted me for my plain appearance or my old-fashioned way of thinking. They told me not to come around because they said I was so stiff and outdated that it was rubbing off on them and they didn't care how hard I was. As for my mother-in-law, she not only made things worse but she also pushed me to have a baby as soon as possible, forced strange herbal medicines on me, made unnecessary doctor's appointments, and told all the neighbors that I was a barren wife. Looking back, there wasn't a single good thing about my marriage. My ex-husband, who used to be so kind before we got married, started to become my mother-in-law's puppet after the wedding. The first day my mother-in-law stormed into our house, I was out because I had an appointment. Apparently, my mother-in-law was upset by this and cried to my husband, I wanted to see Maya, but she wasn't there. I want to be friends with Maya. I'm sad. After hearing his mother cry, my ex-husband yelled at me without listening to my side of the story. She said that she wanted to get along, but all she ever did when we met was bad mouth me. My son seems to have lost weight recently, is it because your cooking is so bad that he can't eat properly? She said things like this loudly whether we were at home or outside, so there was no way we could get along. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law also joined in, laughing at me. I can't help people who act like this anymore. No matter what you say, my feelings won't change. I can't help you guys, so I'm going to hang up now and don't ever contact me again. With that, I finally hung up the phone and blocked the new number. Knowing my ex-husband, he might change his number and try to contact me again, so I decided to change my phone number at the store over the weekend. But before that, those four took action. They broke the promise of the lawyer and suddenly came to my house at 11 p.m. open up. Let us in and take care of us. We're family, you should help us. They were banging on the door, yelling without considering the time. Hey, what's the matter at this hour? Please go back home as it's causing a nuisance to the neighbors. When I went to open the door, they seemed ready to barge in, so I figured I'd try talking through the intercom. But the four of them didn't care, they started banging on the door and raising a ruckus. I couldn't believe I was dealing with people this out of control. I was left holding my head in my hands, considering calling the cops, when I heard sirens from outside. It looked like a neighbor had taken the initiative. As soon as they heard the police sirens, the surprised group thought I had called the police and tried to run away, but by then, a crowd had gathered, and escape was not an option. So the four of them were escorted to the police station by the responding officers. I was questioned about the incident, and I explained everything that had happened. After that, word about what my ex-husband and his relatives had done spread quickly in the neighborhood. It turned out that among the crowd that had gathered was a co-worker of my ex-husband's, so by the next day, the whole office knew what had happened. He was already having a hard time because of a pay cut, but after getting the police involved, the company wasn't going to let it slide. My ex-husband ended up getting fired and couldn't afford to pay his apartment rent anymore. Money issues caused a rift between him and his sister's family, so their group living situation ended. Now. Charlie is living in public housing with his mother, working multiple part-time jobs to make ends meet. Even his mother has started working part-time a few days a week, desperate to earn money. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.